gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. We'll chant Om once together. Synchronize the chanting of Om with your exhalation. Breathe in. Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadi Tamas Toma Vit Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Gently open your eyes. We'll chant from verses 6 to 10 of chapter 3. Karmendriyani Sayam Yah Karmendriyani Sayamya Ya Aste Manasasmaran Ya Aste Manasasmaran Indriyartan Vimudhatma Indriyartan Vimudhatma Mithyachara Sauchate Mithyachara Sauchate Yastvindriyani Manasa Yastvindriyani Manasa Niyam Yara Bhater Juna Niyam Yara Bhater Juna Karmendriyai Karma Yogam Karmendriyai Karma Yogam Asatta Savishishyate Asatta Savishishyate Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam Karma Jayo Hya Karmanaha Karma Jayo Hya Karmanaha Shari Rayatra Pichate Shari Rayatra Pichate Na Prasidhye Da Karmanaha Na Prasidhye Da Karmanaha Yagnyarthat Karmanon Yatra Yagnyarthat Karmanon Yatra Loko yam karma bandhana Loko yam karma bandhana Tadartham karma kaunteya Tadartham karma kaunteya 
ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಂಗ ಸಮಾಚಾರ ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಂಗ ಸಮಾಚಾರ ಸಹ ಯಜ್ಞ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸೃಷ್ಟ ಸಹ ಯಜ್ಞ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸೃಷ್ಟ ಪುರೋವಾಚ ಪ್ರಜಾಪತಿ ಪುರೋವಾಚ ಪ್ರಜಾಪತಿ ಅನೇನ ಪ್ರಸವಿಷ್ಯ ಅನೇನ ಪ್ರಸವಿಷ್ಯ ಯೇಷವೋಸ್ವಿಷ್ಟ ಕಾಮಧೂಕ್ ಯೇಷವೋಸ್ವಿಷ್ಟ ಕಾಮಧೂಕ್ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಡೇ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ವೇರ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾಚಾರ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ means wrong improper in in general we uh, will be going into more depth of it something which is false you know and aachara means your conduct so improper conduct that is called mithyachara a person who acts in a wrong way now what is interesting is he is deliberately using the word aachara that is conduct at the action level why because he is talking about karma yoga supposing let us say this was a chapter on jnana yoga he wouldn't have said mithya charah he would have said mithya vicharah vicharah means thoughts so what does this show before we go into more depth about what is this hypocrisy which is talking about prima facie just the choice of words gives us a, a deep message that is he uses the right word right word in the sense that word which is most suitable for this context in this context what is the context here karma yoga chapter 3 is about karma yoga so every word which he chooses is directed towards karma yoga now in the next chapter you will find that all the words which he uses will be uh, directed towards whatever the theme of the chapter is this is a very very deep principle which you need to absorb and practice that is you should always act according to the context you it, when i say act i mean think feel act and speak also generally your action is uh, without any relevance to the context your actions your speech everything it is more so applicable at the spiritual level from a worldly level when you practice being in the context acting in the context of the situation you will be very successful that's what a a, a great thinker said no uh, when you are in rome do as the romans do that's a figurative statement to say that see what the context is and act accordingly supposing you meet a person who is 
very very orthodox now the uh, and he asks you so what do you learn uh, every sunday from the bhagavad gita now you will have to tell see you would have learned something but how do you present it to him will depend upon what is the context if he is a very orthodox person you may present it in a particular way supposing a businessman asks you so what, uh, what are the benefits of attending the sunday uh, sessions now if you say the benefit is you will at, you will become a sthita pragnya <laughs> now that will not inspire him you have to see the context oh he is a business person so when you attend the sunday sessions your productivity improves because your mind becomes very calm your intellect becomes sharp whatever it is whatever you have absorbed when you present it in his way you attract abundance into your life so like this when you do then that communication will be very effective you see 99% of the time you always act out of context and talk out of context many people tell me sir uh, i you know want to do the sadhana but my family members don't understand the importance the value of sadhana that is because you are not doing it in the right way if you do the sadhana in the right way what will happen is you will start acting according to the context so in a when you are with the family you will be fully there whatever your role is as a husband or as a wife or a mother father whatever your roles are you will play all of them uh, to perfection you will do all your duties with so much of love and affection when you function like that in that context then no family member would object to your doing your sadhana rather they will also start following you it is because you start speaking and acting out of context in the name of um, uh, you know contemplation or being in a meditative state you stop doing your duties properly you don't take care of your children you don't take care of your spouse and when they come and ask you supposing you tell them don't have expectations in life that is what yogishri says now not only your name goes <laughs> but you drag yogishri's name also there why are you having ex- uh, expectations that is selfishness instead have unconditional love so if you are talking like this out of context that is when they will object say i am showing a mirror to you for you to look at yourself that is very important if you want to become a yogi mithyachar that is draw, um, when he talks of hypocrisy you have to drop all forms of hypocrisy so primarily even before getting into what mithya is just the choice of this word speaks so much instead of using the word vicharah he is using acharah because it is karma yoga action he is talking about action here so everything which he says will be related to action he will connect it to action that is the beauty of any master he will see when you go to a master he will first assess you uh, wh- wh- where are you coming from and then whatever wisdom he has to give you supposing you ask for advice he will not give a gentle advice he will um, uh, carefully uh, arrange all the um, thoughts and direct them towards your context even in the second chapter we saw that when krishna was talking about the supreme self the atman 
the indestructible nature of atman what he was trying to say is the bodies may be destroyed when we say a person dies generally the bo- uh, body is uh, is destroyed but he says the atman remains the atman is indestructible in order to say that convey that to arjuna who was a warrior the language which krishna uses is very interesting he says weapons cannot cut this since arjuna was a warrior he uses that language the choice of words are so much uh, uh, to the context if he were to talk uh, let us say lord krishna uh, is here right now and uh, a computer engineer goes and asks him uh, about the indestructible nature of the atman he will not say weapons will not cut this he may say no um, computer can figure out what the atman is no virus can destroy the atman some something which is more suited for that person so this is something which you can start practicing in your life start acting according to the context if you are at home it is a, the context is a family so you have various rules there you should not bring the rules of office i am giving an arbitrary example so if you are a father do your duties as a father if you are a mother do your duties as a mother if you are a husband or wife do your duties that is the context there now when you go to office you have to be uh different because the context is different in office first of all you know determine are you a boss or are you an employee sometimes you can be both you may be a team leader and you may you will also be reporting to someone higher up so if you are an employee then you should listen to the boss if you are a boss then you should make others act according to what your planning is what your vision is you just do the reverse i know many people who complain my boss does not listen to me how many times i told him he is not able to understand now if your boss starts listening to you then you will become the boss no see what is the context what is the role which you are playing that is very important your actions will be effective only if you act according to the context you may independently be very talented but you have to act according to the context your communication will become very effective only if you speak according to the context your entire life will become very very enriching your whole personality will become so effective when you start functioning according to the context that is thinking feeling um, speaking and acting according to the context so krishna was an avatar now his wisdom is infinite but when he talked to arjuna he spoke the language of arjuna the the context here is the uh, battlefield the warrior arjuna was uh, uh, wanting to run away so even when he gives a final advice krishna says uh, you know you should fight this is my advice to you of course yatha ichchasi tata karu do whatever you like whatever you feel is right but this is what 
is the path. He brings it back to his context all the time. It is Arjuna who, star, who starts questioning out of context. In the second chapter, we saw that. He asked Krishna, how does a sthita pragnya, a person who is perfect, how, how will a sthita pragnya walk? How will a sthita pragnya talk? Now, that is not his context at all. He is right in the middle of a battlefield. He is unable to face a situation which is in front of him. Now, instead of asking about that, he is asking about a sthita pragnya, which incidentally works to our advantage because if Arjuna hadn't asked that question, Krishna wouldn't have given the, the answer. And uh, because Krishna gave that, we are all benefited. That's a different matter. But if we take it from purely from Arjuna's point of view, that question is irrelevant to the context. It is only in the beginning of the third chapter, he starts understanding the situation, the context. That is why he starts asking about action. Third, fourth, slowly he will be going and then slowly, slowly he will start asking about uh, how to control the mind, what are the factors which uh, uh, don't allow me to control the mind. Mind is so powerful. So many things he will be asking. Even in this third chapter towards the end he will say, why is it that a person uh, does something wrong even though he knows that that is wrong. It's a very relevant question because Arjuna knows that his duty is to fight. It's a righteous war. But he is unable to do that. He wants to go back. He wants to run away from the situation. So that question is uh, more um, to his context. So, when you gain this wisdom, the high principles are given by the master to you for your personal reflection and growth, not for you to talk about them to others. If somebody is interested in that, uh, in, uh, in the higher, you can introduce them to the Sunday sessions. So you will have to understand what your role is. Out of context, if you go and tell them about the infinite, you have, you know, Sita Pragna, this, that, just because you are inspired, then uh, people will actually start avoiding you. So, when these noble thoughts are given, when the higher philosophy is given, you should absorb all that, use them for your personal growth, to expand your consciousness. When the practical tips are given, Use them for enriching your life. This is how a yogi always functions. A yogi is rooted in the infinite consciousness. But at the same time, you will find a yogi very, very practical in life. If you misunderstand this, then you will start philosophizing where it's, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, there is no requirement. For every little thing you will start philosophizing, you will, you will start uh, uh, unnecessarily talking uh, these high principles. It will actually repel others. In this third chapter later on, he will be giving a tip. How do you uh, guide others? Very interesting. He says, you should act, you should function in such a way. Make your personality in such a way, um, so attractive that others start looking up to you automatically. You don't go behind others and keep telling them. That is why when this, um, when someone asked this question about addiction, 
I took up that question and answered that. Because on one hand, if you say, I am attending the uh, Sunday sessions, I am uh, doing the Yoga Sankirtan, Sadhana and all that. Uh, I am following every principle. But on the other hand, if you are addicted to alcohol or smoking or something, then there is a big dichotomy. The first place where you need to apply this wisdom would be in the area of your addiction. Here I am taking addiction as an example because that question was asked. So, you should identify where you are having problems and that is where you should apply this wisdom first. Supposing, let's say you are very lazy. The first place where you need to apply this wisdom is in that area. Start becoming prompt. It's a, uh, it, it comes through practice, you know, by doing the sadhana and developing willpower. Slowly, slowly, you will become very, very prompt. Supposing you have the uh, nature of being highly impulsive, without any thinking you just start, you just do something or say something, then that is the area where you need to apply this wisdom. This is how you, you have to uh, apply this wisdom in your context. Supposing you are not uh, um, uh, being productive in life, you have many duties to do but you are not earning anything, then use this wisdom, do the sadhana and materialize a good job for yourself, uh, improve your financial condition. That is the first thing you need to do. If you don't do that, after a while, you will not be able to practice this philosophy at all. So this is the spiritual application of this principle. So one is in the world you should uh, function according to the context. The other thing is when it comes to applying uh, this ancient wisdom in your life, you should see your context and apply this wisdom. If you are a businessman, you should apply this wisdom there. You should improve your clarity and uh, you should grow your business. If you are, let's say, a musician, then you should apply this wisdom there. You should sing or whatever instrument you are playing with uh, more bhavana. You know, they, we say, no, soulful music. That should be your aim. Supposing you are a yoga teacher, then apply this wisdom there. Help as many people as possible to become physically fit. See, that is what is called karma yoga. When you apply this wisdom in your context, then it becomes karma yoga. Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga are two sides of the same coin only. One is talking about the principles. The other is talking about the practical application of the principles. That's all. So the moment we talk of practical application, the question is, what is the context? Like um, Krishna tells Arjuna, you should fight because he is a warrior. Supposing, let's say, you meet a couple. Now, already they are having a pro lot of problems. They are uh, thinking about a divorce, let us say. And they ask you, so you have been attending the Sunday discourses for so long. What is Krishna saying? Anything, any advice? Your advice to them is, Krishna says, you should fight. <laughs> now, whatever little peace which they had in their family life will go away. <laughs> you should see the context. So, such a beautiful choice of words. Mithya, 
Acharaha. See, just imagine Krishna being uh, at such an exalted state. He, 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 was, he is an avatar and yet he comes down to the level of Arjuna and presents this in such a way that it will appeal to Arjuna. That is the beauty. So, one is the context. The other thing, the, this is a further deep message from uh, the word Acharaha which we get is, see, Mithya means leading a false life. We will come to that, but as of now you can understand it as uh, a false life. We will see the application of that at various levels. Now, one is to keep thinking in a false way and all that. But if you are not careful, slowly, slowly, your whole life will become very hypocritical. That, that is the symbolic meaning of Acharaha. Acharaha means how you express yourself. So if you don't practice the simplicity and straightforwardness in your thinking, slowly, slowly, it will start show, uh, showing in your actions. See, you take any negativity, you cannot hide that for long. Supposing you have a particular negative thought. Now, for a while you hide it from others. And after a while that will become a very strong emotion, negative emotion. That time it will become more difficult to hide it from others. But yet let us say you somehow manage. But after a while your speech and your actions will start turning negative. You cannot hide it forever. That is why uh, in spirituality we say simplicity should be followed. You can never hide anything from others over a long period of time. Whatever your true nature is, that will start manifesting. That is the uh, deeper uh, connotation, implication of the word acharaha. Acharaha means conduct. It has come right up to the action level, manifestation level. So what are we doing all the time? We are trying to uh, you know, hide ourselves, all our negativities. It is like pushing all the dirt under the carpet. Instead of cleaning the room, supposing you push all the dirt under the carpet, it will look clean for a while. But how long can you manage that? If you keep on pushing the dirt under the carpet, Slowly, slowly, the dirt may not be seen directly by others, but a foul smell will start coming in your room. That can never be prevented. So if you want to make your life better, you need to start cleaning yourself up instead of trying to avoid your negativities. When you do your Yoga Sankirtan Sadhana every day, which is a very powerful meditation sadhana. So it will cause a, a lot of cleaning up to so all your negative thoughts, your weaknesses, everything will start coming out. And over a period of time, by surrendering to the Guru Shakti and taking uh, the help from the Guru Shakti, it, uh, practicing the deep breathing and all that, you will slowly, slowly release all those negative thoughts and negative emotions, whatever your weaknesses are. But generally, what is the tendency? The moment you're, you're let's say you're doing your sadhana and some uh, negative thought comes, the moment the negative thought comes, you try to avoid it because you're unable to face it. See, before we go 
into the deeper aspects of mithya um the various applications i am giving you the solution itself how to get out of this falsehood why is it that a person hides why is it that a person is hypocritical because he or she is afraid to face himself or herself deep deep within you you know what your weaknesses are but you are afraid to face them therefore you tend to avoid them so at least during sadhana let them come out you, you can release them there also you want to avoid many questions i get oh too many thoughts come i try i am trying to meditate i am trying to keep my mind calm but when you during yoga sankirtan this happens that yes it will happen because a cleaning up process the room can be said to be truly clean only if you remove all the dirt which are hidden under the carpet and you completely clean that but if you fall a prey to mithya then what will happen is that you will not want to release your negative forces within you you will rather prefer to push them under the carpet that will not work so mithya aachara it has come up to the manifestation level so you should be very careful about uh, any uh, negative thoughts because any negative thought will quickly develop into an emotion and over a period of time it will start coming out at the action level and speech level so if you have this weakness of hypocrisy again that will slowly start coming at your action and speech level see you may be able to fool others for a while but in the long run your true nature will manifest in tamil they say you no know, neela sayam velutu poch which means um there's a there's a story where a fox wanted to become the king of the forest so what the fox did was um uh, you know somewhere it it found a, a, a bottle of uh, blue paint and uh, it poured it on its body and suddenly it turned completely blue so it went to the forest and when every animal and every creature saw uh, the fox they all thought that some new uh, uh, new creature had come her so fox said listen Uh, i have this power i have that power so from today onwards i am only the king even the lion became frightened when it saw the blue uh, colored animal so the fox became the king for a while but then the story is that one day it started raining <laughs> and when the rain came all the blue paint which the fox had applied on the body everything got washed away and then the true colors were seen by the other creatures and all the animals were so angry that they came and they started uh, attacking the fox this is the beautiful story which uh, we have read when we were in school it has a very deep moral what your true nature is cannot be hidden uh, for a long time see even when you are trying to hide it there are two people whom you can never fool number one you cannot fool yourself your conscience is very clear the reason why you the, the fact that you are trying to hide your negativity means you already recognized that fault isn't it so you you cannot fool yourself the second person whom you cannot fool is your guru because a master can see can uh, has the penetrative 
uh, ability. So he will be able to see through. So it is the others whom you may fool that too temporarily. Why temporarily? Because ultimately whatever you are hiding will come out in the form of actions and speech. It, the, 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 your nature will express itself. You cannot escape from it. That is why he uses the word Mithya Achara very carefully. But it starts with thoughts only, vicharaha only. But finally it comes to Acharaha, expression level. So what is this Mithya which he is talking about? Mithya means act, uh, functioning in a false way, being false or uh, deceitful. I am giving you first a few dimensions of um, Mithya. So what do we mean by false? See another dimension of Mithya is uh, invertedly, opposite, contrary. That is the falsehood. That is you are someone inside and you are someone outside. This is called Mithya. So you are always wearing a mask. So what you project to the world is one thing, but what you are is uh, something else. If you take a newborn baby, the newborn baby is the same outside and inside. That is the opposite of Mithya. So you should Practice the sadhana of being true to yourself. As Shakespeare said, you know, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. So you should now absorb this very, very powerful spiritual principle which is being given to you. That is, be true to yourself. In, a, in the later chapters, he will be giving uh, many, many qualities which are manifestations of being true to yourself. For example, he will say, Arjavam, uprightness. Uprightness in your thoughts, in your motives. Very important. We always try to manipulate unnecessarily where no manipulation is required. Again, when it is said be straightforward, it doesn't mean you are unadjustable or you just keep talking in a rough way to others. See, you have to carefully understand these principles and apply them in the right way. That, that is what I am trying to say is being upright doesn't mean you should not be diplomatic. Many people misunderstand that. In the name of uh, Arjavam, Apra, straightforwardness and all that, they become very uncouth and uh, uh, you know they, they become too plain. That is not what we are talking about. We are talking about a, a habit, a motive where you are trying to hide behind a mask. Again, as Shakespeare says, one may smile and smile and yet be a villain, he says. If you, in, in the, if you take the Mahabharata, the, uh, they have, they have, uh, there are different uh, characters. It's a very interesting study, you know, psychological study. If you take up each character with his or her faults and uh, positivities, so if you take the character of Shakuni and if you take the character of Krishna, both of them looked alike externally. Uh, Krishna always had a smile. It is said that Shakuni also used to smile. 
Krishna was uh, always using his intellect. Shakuni was also using his intellect. But what is the difference? There is a world of a difference. Krishna was doing everything for loka sangraha, for the benefit of others, whereas Shakuni was planning, scheming, everything was for selfish purposes. So he is also smiling, he is also smiling. Now who is a Shakuni, who is a Krishna? It depends on the motives. That's, that's why Shakespeare said, one may smile and smile and yet be a villain. So we are not talking of merely changing the acharaha, the conduct. We are talking about bringing about a change in your achara behavior by changing your inner attitude. That's why the word mithya is a very, very powerful word. That is a weakness which you need to conquer. So, I will give you a few applications of this mithya. How it manifests in your life. Then it will start becoming uh, clear to you. First, at the physical level, he himself has given the example in verse number 6, where a person is restraining the sense organs, but mentally indulging in it. That is a mithya, that is a hypocrisy. So does that mean now you allow your senses to go full on? No, then that will become indulgence. See, there also one can practice hypocrisy. In the name of uh, the Bhagavad Gita, if you say, Oh, I am allowing my senses to act, but mentally I am controlled. If you say all that, you have to check. Are you at that level? Anywhere this hypocrisy can come. Here is directly given the example at the physical level. So you should find out whatever I am speaking, whatever actions I am doing, are they in line with my emotions and thoughts? Generally you feel something but you talk something else. As a sadhana, whenever you uh, get some spare time, you can practice this. That is, it's a very powerful sadhana. You can practice it only to your level, but you can make a start. I will uh, introduce more such things in the higher empowerment courses, you know. That is, everything which you speak for about, let us say, five minutes or so, when you are speaking, you should Visualize, feel and then talk. It'll, it's not an easy sadhana, it's a very difficult sadhana. You should feel every word, you should visualize that and talk. A master does that. A yogi is one who has mastered uh, this principle. A yogi is never hypocritical. Whatever he says, there will be so much of feeling. The thought, emotion and uh, the speech and action, all these four are in one straight line for a yogi. So when you wish someone, good morning, don't say that in a mechanical way, that's being hypocritical. If you want to wish some, uh, someone, if you want to say good morning, why don't you say good morning with all the emotion? <laughs> See, it is not the voice modulation. Again, don't misunderstand that. Because there are many courses where they teach how to become hypocritical. Many, many courses uh, on uh, sales techniques and so-called personality development. They, they teach you how to smile. They, they teach you how to wish and all that. We are not talking about those kinds of techniques. Those are all utterly uh, superficial. What do you mean teaching a person how to smile? Very interesting. They say there are 12 steps to smile. 
they they even uh, say up to what extent you should bring your uh, you know you, you you should take your lips apart all these kinds of foolishness are uh, going on today whether you should show your teeth when you're smiling or whether you should not show it where you should do this kind of analysis where in personality development courses <laughs> whereas when it comes to our ancient wisdom they don't give such techniques they say start smiling from inside a yogi um, you know a yogi smile doesn't come merely from the lips it comes from his deepest core from his soul so when he talks of uh, overcoming this hypocrisy we are talking of a complete change internally so you can practice this sadhana when you say uh, good morning to someone genuinely feel that that person's morning should be good not uh, uh, you know saying things in a mechanical way when you say good night genuinely feel that the other person's sleep should be very peaceful visualize that it may be difficult to start with at least bring that emotion if you keep on practicing that slowly slowly that will start purifying you so much because if you have any wrong intentions your own conscience will show that to you and with the help of the guru shakti you will be able to release all that and slowly slowly you will start getting into the state of unconditional love when you look into the eyes of a master you will find so much of unconditional love will be coming out it is not about again if you go to these personality development courses they'll say unconditional love means you should look like this you should do like this <laughs> there's nothing like that it is the inner light which will shine forth so if you want to become a yogi this is the simple method start speaking start acting with pure motives with the right bhavana so at the physical level how does hypocrisy uh, function you do something but your intentions are different you say something but your intentions are totally different so first bring a line when your intentions are good like you may ask um, uh, this question see krishna So he said so many things to so many people but uh, his intentions were different so how uh, how is it that's why i gave you that example the difference between krishna and shakuni that is uh, a very very advanced level once you are completely purified from within then you really don't need to bother about your speech and actions and all that because everything which you say and act will be out of unconditional love your motives will never for be negative that that is a very advanced stage so how do you reach there this is the way so this is at the physical level then at the emotional level how does hypocrisy manifest how does it function false emotions when you have a lot of anger towards someone you portray a lot of love vice versa when you have a lot of love towards someone you portray anger this is what the ego makes you do false humility in many many sessions it is repeated no as a sadhak be very humble so immediately the ego is waiting how to now uh, uh, take this person away from the spiritual path so when you are trying to practice humility the ego can come there and it can influence your mind instead of becoming genuinely humble you will start becoming uh, humble in a false way
long back there was a a person i'm talking of many years back he uh, he he uh, requested me to come to his home and uh, i had some time uh, some free time so i i went there he had, he had constructed a new place you know and uh, it was a very big house like a palace and it it was really wonderful so he was just taking me around and showing and he said uh, i'm feeling so blessed sir that you know you accepted my request and uh, this is my true uh, celebration graha pravesham and all this he was saying and i i was feeling so happy for him because you know when you see a person he has worked he has earned and he has uh, built such a beautiful house for himself that is such a wonderful feeling because when you uh, work for something and get it it is uh, commendable and i knew that person was in dire straits uh, many years uh, that is a few years before that and he genuinely worked on his finance and he had come to this level now after showing me the whole house what he said was he folded his palms like this and he said idu da sir in the yeri or the good sir he said <laughs> i'll translate that in english idu da in the yeri or the good sir mean this is only the um, the hut of this poor man you know he's telling about his house so the moment he said that he was a sadhak very close you know the moment he said that i said stop there don't do this this is false humility till now you were showing me around you were saying this is the marble which is this is i have done that everything is fine you are being yourself nothing wrong with that but suddenly now why are you bringing in that falsity what do you mean in the air is a poor man's hut this is false humility i said now immediately clip it off because if you allow this thing to grow now over a period of time whatever wealth you have gathered everything will go away because you are generating negative energy unnecessarily he being a good sadhak he immediately got the point he said yes sir i will not do that you are trying to impress unnecessarily so this is the false humility we are talking about like i i was uh, telling you know in the, in one of the earlier sessions a lady had uh, sent me a mail um, uh, oh infinite uh, master my infinite pranams at your infinite feet no what is this <laughs> use such a word infinite do you normally use such words in your conversation you don't see in the uh, discourses in a particular context the master talks about the infinite but if you start using it all the time that itself is false humility so she had asked for some advice and uh, uh, i i had to tell her if you want to really grow spiritually first just be normal a person who is humble will neither be arrogant nor will he or she be subservient so at the emotional level false humility false love you do uh, some negative action and then you justify it uh, with some uh, very noble motive it is very interesting you want to postpone your activity out of laziness but you give it a very noble motto oh i don't want to disturb the other person that is why i didn't ask for advice so <laughs> your your mind will play all these tricks so at the emotional level mithya the hypocrisy functions in this way false emotions then at the uh, intellectual level 
how does hypocrisy function is very very interesting at the intellectual level where the mithya functions in such a way where you try to cover up your ignorance where you don't know you are unable to say i don't know unless you say i don't know you cannot learn you cannot master anything but your ego will come and prevent you from saying i don't know saying means we're not talking or merely saying feeling i don't know you always try to cover up your ignorance i know many people supposing you give them uh some gadget and they don't know how to operate it it's very obvious that they don't know now uh, if you tell them no this is how it is. Ah, no 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 i know i know they they immediately resist because they are unable to accept that yes i don't know this let me learn so you have to carefully see see it is not enough if you generally understand this word mithya oh i should not be hypocritical in which area does this hypocrisy function in your life first find out that is the context and that is where you need to apply am i being hypocritical at the physical level am i being hypocritical at the emotional level or am i being hypocritical at the intellectual level a yogi is one who has no hypocrisy at the intellectual level also if he knows something he says i know it if he doesn't know something he'll say i don't know it he is he is very factual this is the practice which can help you to overcome mithya at the intellectual level start becoming factual in life what you need to understand is mithya acharya when you try to cover up your ignorance it is only a question of time after a while your ignorance will manifest itself in some way or other whatever little respect you have also will go away so have the courage to say i don't know when you don't know something similarly have the objectivity to say i know when you know something see just because you say i know it doesn't mean it's ego you you can be factual about it some people even when they know they say i don't know that is again false humility so basically not being hypocritical means being yourself being factual being authentic being original so it can manifest at the physical level it can manifest at the emotional level it can manifest at the intellectual level how does it manifest at the spiritual level that is very interesting when it comes to hypocrisy there is a difference between spiritual image and what true spirituality is hypocrisy can manifest as a spiritual image a person may be known to others as spiritual that is called spiritual image see what is the image image is something there is the opinion which others have formed about you that is called the image your image so you may have a spiritual image just because a person has a spiritual image doesn't mean now he has become a master so uh, you should first learn to differentiate between spiritual image and true spirituality actually true spirit true spirituality has no image today what i find is people think that just because a person has become very famous has uh, uh, obtained a spiritual image has more number of followers they think that person is truly spiritual it's not so that way if you go to these himalayan masters they have no followers a big uh, thing no in uh, uh, the social media and all that where uh, i have to increase my following uh, let like, you know then i'll become an influencer all these things they are saying now if you go to a himalayan master 
he drives away people <laughs> actually no followers does it mean that that person is not a master this is what adi shankara says you you may go round the world and um give lectures you may rock audiences but yet you may be nowhere near spirituality he says so today especially i'm finding uh in today's context the masses get misled by the spiritual image rather than seeing what true spirituality is a truly spiritual person will be very simple approachable see simplicity is not necessarily poverty again there there is a confusion if a person is rich they think he is not simple no even a king can be very simple the good old days of the great kings were called raja rishis you know they were rajas kings at the same time they were rishis they were practicing spirituality they they did all their duties to perfection so it is not the quantity of wealth which determines whether you are spiritual or uh, whether you are simple or not when we are talking of simplicity we are talking of being simple as a person now whether you should have a big house or small a small house or how much of wealth your all that depends upon the your financial condition that has nothing to do with your personality actually what a yogi does is is that he is a, such a simple person he never allows anything from the world to influence his personality he may let us say a yogi has a lot of wealth he may have a lot of wealth but he never allows the wealth to condition his personality a, a normal person what happens is when he doesn't have wealth he is in false humility suddenly you give him a lot of wealth make that person wealthy now he will get he will become arrogant about it so the uh, world conditions your personality a yogi is free of that weakness he has no followers he will be himself suddenly let's say more people start coming to him and um, uh, within a within a, some a period of time so, uh, many many followers he will still remain the same only simple approachable simplicity is a hallmark of spirituality so you should Uh, as a sadhak you should be very very clear about this know the difference between spiritual image and true spirituality because only if you know the difference you will go for uh, spirituality instead of trying to get a spiritual image image is something which can uh, keep changing see another person's opinion about you can change any time one day that person may praise you without have has that person really understood your value and is that person praising no next day that person may criticize you so if you are going to allow your personality to fluctuate according to others opinions about you now you will always be in stress only when you lead a false life your mind will be in a state of stress high level of stress when you free yourself of all mithya falsity uh, the the inverted you know that inverted behavior when you free yourself of all that you genuinely become peaceful it's like taking all your luggage which you were carrying on your head and putting them down you know you become very free like a bird you see a bird you see the entire nature they don't have this weakness of being false whatever they are they just manifest naturally no animal or no bird wants to impress anyone 
No aspect of nature has this weakness of impressing. It is only the human being. That is why a human being, uh, uh, you know, has to do sadhana. Because human being has been given the choice of action. So the more you start seeing how mithya uh, is playing in your life, you will be able to apply the wisdom this ancient wisdom, you will be able to do your sadhana and purify yourself. So take that as uh, today's homework. Already few things I have given, but you can consciously practice this. Just find out. I have given you some tips, no? physical level, emotional level, intellectual level, spiritual level. So am I being hypocritical? Your hypocrisy, your ego will not allow you to accept that you are being hypocritical. That is the most interesting part. But if your motives are pure, if you are a true sadhak, if you genuinely want to develop, if you want to make your life better, then there will be no hesitation. You don't need to go and tell anyone else. This is only for your self-analysis. Don't put pressure on yourself saying, Oh, I have to tell others. There is nothing. Nobody needs to know. It's your own analysis. Now, where am I being hypocritical? How is this mithya functioning in my personality? Is it functioning at the physical level? Is it functioning at the... Generally, it will function at all levels. The percentage will vary. So, you just build your awareness. As you start becoming aware of it, automatically the correction will start happening. You will start releasing all these negative factors during your sadhana. And when you start releasing the falsity from your personality, you will become very original and authentic. There will be a freshness about you. You will start being reborn. Today, you are not original. You are uh, uh, a version, a copy version of what others have put within you. An artificial version. So will you do that homework? This is for life itself. You are going to start today. Every now and then, you can check your motives, this, uh, you know, after a meeting, after a conversation, after how, what was my motive, it was my motive pure or not. In case you find some impurity, now next time I will do better, I will correct. It's like a game. Now don't get involved with the negativity and lose your confidence. That's not the idea of this homework. Some people start doing that. Recognizing your faults, accepting your faults objectively, that is the first step towards growth. See, I am using the word objectively. So, don't forget that. If you get involved with your faults, then you will lose your self-confidence. Oh, so many faults I am having, is it? That is not good. Is this clear? So, this is a very uh, powerful, uh, I would say, uh, even though I have just given it as a simple homework, it's a very powerful principle. And uh, for a person who tries to practice this sincerely, he or she will find that the whole personality will get shaken up. Because this long-standing habit of leading a false life is something which a sadhak, as a sadhak, you try and break. But it's a long-standing habit. See, the worst part is when you tell a lie uh, many times, you yourself start believing it. In psychology, they have uh, done some research. And they discovered that if you tell a lie some 182 times or something, genuinely, then after that, you yourself will start believing it. So, <laughs> I don't 
Uh, I'm not asking you to practice this. Don't tell a lie for 108 to time. Let me see whether it will work or not. Then you will start believing it. That's what they found out. So, for years together, I would say for many, many births, you have uh, uh, led this mithya, the, the false life. So, today, you are completely disconnected from what you are truly, that is the infinite. The finite is your false self. We say limited self, no? That is a, that is a relative wisdom only. If you want to know what the true wisdom is, this is what it is. Whatever you are thinking about yourself, everything is mithya, false. The word used is maya, you know. Maya means that which is not. Mithya means illusion. Oh, I am so and so. You give your visiting card. That is an illusion. I am this finite person. It's an illusion. From the highest standpoint. Then what is the truth? When you... Practice this mithya in all the relative levels. Then uh, in the deep meditation, one day you will experience what you truly are. And that is the infinite self. And when you uh, become one with that infinite self, you become a sthita pragnya. That is when you truly come out of all mithya, all falsity, all illusions. A master is one who experiences this supreme state of truth. The opposite of mithya is truth, satyam. So the absolute satyam is the infinite reality, is that supreme God. Today you are completely disconnected. Now it is not that you are merely disconnected, but you are uh, you are thinking that whatever is false, which is truly false, that as the truth. That, that is the whole issue. A person mistakes a rope for a snake and then he thinks a snake, that snake is there, that the snake is the truth. A person mistakes the sand in a desert for a water, mirage, you know. But then after that, he believes that the water is true. Similarly, you are the infinite, but you have mistaken yourself for the finite. Actually, the word mo modaha, one of the dimensions is mistaking. I, I did uh, explain it at the last session. So you are you're mistaken what you are and now you are thinking that is the truth. It is like a person forgetting himself. He is thinking that he is somebody else and that is what becomes a truth for him. So from the absolute level, mithya means the individuality itself. But for you to drop that and become one with the infinite, that is at the final stage only. You cannot practice it today, but when you absorb that energy, it will inspire you to do your sadhana. That is why I am mentioning it. Where do you need to practice the sadhana of overcoming this mithya? First, physical, emotional, intellectual level. Then at the uh, relative spiritual level. In all these areas start practicing this. And when you start practicing them, when you keep on purifying yourself, slowly, slowly, your true nature, what you truly are, will start getting revealed to you. See, when you are at a lower level, the Guru Shakti will help you from outside as a form of a Guru. But as you advance, now 
the Guru Shakti will start guiding you from inside. The true Guru will be from inside. It's very interesting. And that Guru Shakti will reveal your infinite grand state to yourself. That is what Thirumolar said, you know. Tannai ariyum arivai arindapin tannai tane archikkinrani. Having known what true knowledge about himself is, he starts worshipping himself, he says. It's a very, very powerful state of a yogi. So if you want to get there, start practicing these things at the relative level. Don't try to emulate a yogi. That also is falsity. That is also mithya. You have to grow into that state. Okay? So I'll stop with that. Today has been a very powerful uh, session. Every thing which is being given to you uh, would have uh, actually hit you tremendously. So when you reflect on these points, uh, you can uh, genuinely bring about a radical change in your personality. Whatever inspires you, start practicing that first. Don't say, Either I will practice 100% perfectly, I will not practice at all. It's a process of growth only. Okay, so think about this. And uh, in the next session, I'll give you a few more dimensions of what this uh, Mithya is, the implications of that. And then we will continue further. Okay, so now... We'll do the uh, Nididhyasana meditation. Sit in a relaxed way. Let your spinal cord be straight. Place your palms on your thighs or on your knees. Palms facing upwards. That is a mudra to receive the higher energy, you know. Fingers naturally curled. Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. With every breath, I am getting into a state of deep relaxation. Feel the divine vibrations.
with every breath i am going deeper and deeper into myself beyond my physical body beyond my emotions beyond my thoughts lies my true self which is infinite from this moment onwards i choose to be a very simple person I feel extremely happy about being myself I am Swayam Prakashit self illuminating offer your gratitude to god supreme
offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back wriggle your fingers your toes rub your palms together to create a warmth cup your eyes with your palms gently rub your eyes your cheeks forehead top of the head back of the head and neck slowly open your eyes Welcome back. So today we had a very powerful session. The principles which are being given have the potential to completely purify your personality it all depends on how much you absorb and how much you practice that depends on you only we will be going into more depth every verse is like a gold mine you know and fortunately you are being exposed to the yogic approach which is like digging and taking out the gold okay so there's one small announcement regarding the guru purnima this year the guru purnima actually falls on uh, july 3rd second and third second late second third mainly it's on third which happens to be a monday so we will be having our guru purnima session on second july second as i told you it's not merely that particular day whole month is guru purnima only it is about connecting to the guru shakti the guru shakti is more manifest during that period so we'll be doing the yogic sadhana of the guru purnima very powerful 
meditation session will be there. A lot of healing energy will be invoked. So that is why every week I am preparing you. All these meditation sessions are meant to prepare you for these kinds of uh, events where the healing shakti will be invoked to a to a great level tremendous power you know so the details will be available in the website you can uh, make a note of them okay and do your sadhana on a daily basis there is no substitute for that so when you do your sadhana on a daily basis every sunday you are getting prepared through these uh, small uh, meditation sessions now when the blast of energy is given in the during the guru purnima you will be able to receive that and benefit maximum many of your goals will start getting fulfilled also that is the power of the guru shakti okay so thank you very much we'll meet in the next session hari om